Hi, boys and girls. I told you I was going to read to you from Alice's Adventures in Wonderland, Lewis Carroll's wonderful story. Um, we started out reading our chapters, and if you remember, Alice went down the rabbit hole, and then she was crying in a pool of tears, and then, of course, there was the caucus race, and rabbit sending in little Bill. And the last two chapters were Alice getting the advice from the caterpillar. And then, of course, the story of Pig and Pepper. And in that last chapter, Alice was met at the door by the fish footman. And there was the frog footman, and they didn't want her to go in the house. And if you remember, um, they were all sneezing because the cook was using too much pepper. And, of course, the mother was, was fighting with her baby and being rough with it. And suddenly the baby was a pig. In Chapter 7, there's a mad tea party. There was a table set out under a tree in front of the house. And the March Hare and the Hatter were having tea at it. A Dormouse was sitting between them fast asleep. And the other two were using it as a cushion resting their elbows on it and talking over its head. Very uncomfortable for Dormouse, thought Alice, only as it's asleep. I suppose it doesn't mind. The table was a large one, but the three were all crowded together at one corner of it. No room, no room, they cried out when they saw Alice coming. There's plenty of room, said Alice indignantly, and she sat down in a large armchair at one end of the table. Have some wine, the March Hare said in a very encouraging tone. Alice looked all around the table, but there was nothing on it but tea. I don't see any wine, she remarked. There isn't any, said the March Hare. Then it wasn't very civil of you to offer it, said Alice angrily. It wasn't very civil of you to sit down without being invited, said the March Hare. I didn't know it was your table, said Alice. It's laid for a great many more than just three. Your hair wants cutting, said the Hatter. He had been looking at Alice for some time with great curiosity. And this was his first speech. You should learn not to make personal remarks, Alice said with some severity. It's very rude. The Hatter opened his eyes very wide on hearing this, but all he said was, why is a raven like a writing desk? Come, we shall have some fun now, thought Alice. I'm glad they've begun asking riddles. I believe I can guess that, she answered out loud. Do you mean that you think you can find out the answer to it, said the March Hare? Exactly so, said Alice. When you should, then you should say what you mean, the March Hare went on. I do, Alice hastily replied. At least, at least I mean what I say. That's the same thing, you know. Not the same thing a bit, said the Hatter. Why, you might just as well say that I see what I eat is the same thing as I eat what I see. You might just as well say, added the March Hare, that I like what I get is the same thing as I get what I like. You might just as well say, added the Dormouse, which seemed to be talking in its sleep, that I breathe when I sleep is the same thing as I sleep when I breathe. It is the same thing with you, said the Hatter, and here the conversation dropped. And the party sat silent for a minute while Alice thought over all she could remember about ravens and writing desks, which wasn't much. And boys and girls, here's the picture of them sitting at the table. Their hatter was the first to break the silence. What day of the month is it? He said, turning to Alice. He had taken his watch out of his pocket and was looking at it very uneasily, shaking it every now and then and holding it to his ear. Alice considered a little and then said, the fourth. Two days wrong, sighed the Hatter. I told you butter wouldn't suit the works. 
he added, looking angrily at the March Hare. It was the best butter, said the March Hare meekly. Yes, but some crumbs must have got in as well. The Hatter grumbled, you shouldn't have put it in with the bread knife. The March Hare took the watch and looked at it gloomily, and then he dipped it in his cup of tea and looked at it again. But he could think of nothing better than to say his first remark. It was the best butter, you know. Alice had been looking over his shoulder with some curiosity. What a funny watch, she remarked. It tells the day of the month, and it doesn't tell what o'clock it is. Why should it, muttered the Hatter. Does your watch tell you what year it is? Of course not, Alice replied very readily, but that's because it stays the same for such a long time. Which is just the case with mine, said the Hatter. Alice fit, felt dreadfully puzzled. The Hatter's remark seemed to her to have no sort of meaning in it, and yet it was certainly English. I don't quite understand you, she said as politely as she could. The Dormouse is asleep again, said the Hatter, and he poured a little hot tea upon its nose. The Dormouse shook its head impatiently and said without even opening its eyes, Of course, of course, just what I was going to remark myself. Have you guessed the riddle yet, the Hatter said, turning to Alice again? No, Alice replied. I give up. What's the answer? I haven't the slightest idea, said the Hatter. Nor I, said the March Hare. Alice sighed wearily. I think you might do something better with the time, she said, than wasting it and asking riddles that have no answers. If you knew time as well as I do, said the Hatter, you wouldn't talk about wasting it. It's him. I don't know what you mean, said Alice. Of course you don't, the Hatter said, tossing his head contemptuously. I dare say you never even spoke to time. Perhaps not, said Alice cautiously, but I know I have to beat time when I learn music. Ah, that counts for it, said the Hatter. He won't stand for it at all. Now, if you only kept on good terms with him, he'd do almost anything you liked with the o'clock. For instance, suppose it were nine o'clock in the morning, just time to begin lessons. You'd only have to whisper a hint to time, and round goes the clock in a twinkling, half past one, time for dinner. I only wish it was, the March Hare said to itself in a whisper. That would be grand, certainly, said Alice. But then I shouldn't be hungry for it, you know. Not at first, perhaps, said the Hatter, but you could keep it to half past one as long as you liked. Is that the way you manage, Alice asked. The Hatter shook his head mournfully. Not I, he replied. We quarreled last March, just before he went mad, you know. And it was the great concert given by the Queen of Hearts. And I had to sing. Twinkle, twinkle, little bat, how I wonder where you're at. You know the song, perhaps. I've heard something like it, said Alice. It goes on, you know, the Hatter continued in his way. Up above the world you fly, like a tea tray in the sky. Twinkle, twinkle. Here the doormat shook itself and began singing in its twi sleep. Twinkle, twinkle, winkle, twinkle. And went on so long that they had to pinch it to make it stop. Well, I'd hardly finished the first verse, said the Hatter, when the queen bawled out. He's murdering the time. Off with his head. I'm going to stop there, boys and girls, because there's another quite a bit left, and I'll continue that with you and finish it. But I want you to think about this question. For the Mad Hatter, number one, think about which characters do we first meet at the Mad Hatter's house. Think about that. See if you can write an answer for me and send it to me. And what was wrong with the Mad Hatter's watch? What was wrong with his watch? Think about those two questions and see if you can write me an answer and surprise me. We'll discuss it together.
next time. Have a great evening.